In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to perform global fitting with a finimeter. For this, we have to go to the option projects of the main menu and into projects, we are going to create a new fit project by clicking in the option new fit project. We will select the option stoichiometric equilibria approach and let's name the project. Click on save project. And now we have to start including the data series or the isotherms that we need to fit. Click on add data series. And this option will take us directly to our database of isotherms. Select the first isotherm you want to analyze. At this point, you can visualize your isotherm and you can delete points here at this stage too. Click on next and select a binding model that you want to use to analyze your isotherm. In this example, we are going to select the simple binding model that, that goes from free species to the formation of the complex MA. By clicking on next, we will have the first isotherm included in our binding project and associate it to the binding model that we have selected. Next, I'm going to include a second data series, a second isotherm. Click on add data series and repeat the process. Select the data series, click on next and select a model that is going to be used to fit that second um, isotherm. In this particular example, I will also select the simple model that involves the formation of the one-to-one -one interaction, of the one-to-one -one complex. So what we have in this project now is two isotherms and these two isotherms correspond to the same binding interaction. So we are working with replicates. So how can we do global fitting of these two isotherms? So one, one thing we have to take into account is determine which are the parameters that are shared between isotherms. In this particular example, since the two isotherms are describing the same binding event and is a one-to-one -one interaction, the binding constant and the enthalpy of both isotherms have to be the same. So we are going to impose this restriction in the global fitting. For this, we have to go to the box value ec of one of the um, isotherms. So let's go to the box value ec of the binding constants of the second data series that, that I have included. And clicking on, on this box, a new window will pop up where I can write down whatever I need. In this case, I'm going to write K11, which describes or is a representative of the binding constant of the first isotherm. So with, the, with this restriction, I am imposing that the binding constant of the second isotherm, K21, has to be equal to the constant 1, 1, which is the one corresponding to the first isotherm. I'm going to do the same for the enthalpy. So clicking on the value egg box of H21, I will type H11 to impose the restriction that 
H21 of the second isotherm has to be the same as H11 of the first isotherm. If you pay attention to the fit box, you will see that since I am linking the two constants and the two enthalpies, automatically the fit box remains unchecked for the second isotherm because K and H of the second isotherms are now linked to the parameters of the first isotherm. What happens with the other parameters? Well, we are considering here the parameter Rm, which stands for potential deviation between the nominal concentration of the species M in the cell and the true active concentration of this species. And this parameter is not going to be considered a global parameter because it can be different. So we are going to consider this parameter as a fitting parameter and um, fit it locally. So individual fitting between the isotherms. We can also consider the parameter QDIL as a fitting parameter in both isotherms and for this I'm going to check the option fit for both isotherms for the heat of dilution because in these two isotherms I don't have any blank experiment. Same as with RM, I will keep the heat of dilution as an individual parameter. Now I'm ready to run the experiment. The first analysis I have performed is not good. And the reason why is that I am considering that in both cases the parameter Rm is variable and the parameter Ra is a constant and equal to 1. This means that I am considering that there are potential deviations between the nominal concentration and the true active concentration of the species M, but that the species A is always 100% active. So as a second trial, what I'm going to do is to consider that there can be a potential deviation between the nominal concentration of A and the true active concentration in one of the isotherms. I will go to fit settings again. And in the first isotherm, I will consider Rm as a constant parameter. And instead, I will consider potential deviations in the parameter Ra. For this, I will check the fit box of Ra. I can also modify the boundaries, the minimum and maximum boundaries of Ra, just in case. And I will run again the project. As you can see, this analysis is much better than the previous one. And this means that in the two experiments I perform, I had to consider that in the first isotherm in the experiment, there was a deviation between the nominal concentration of the species A and the true active concentration of this species. So this is an illustrative example on how a global fitting can help even for a simple case as the case of a one-to-one -one interaction and duplicate uh, experiments. So if we had performed these experiments separately, we would have obtained in both cases good fitting of the individual analysis, but with different binding constants and enthalpy. 
for each case due to um, deviation in the concentration of the species A in one of the isotherms. So only with the global fitting we were able to figure out where this deviation was and we were able to obtain an accurate value and single value of K and delta H. So this would be the simplest example of a global fitting, but of course you can use global fitting to simultaneously fit many isotherms at a time, 10, 20, as much as you want, and also um, to use this global fitting as a potent tool to do analysis of complex interactions. So this was a simple case of one-to-one -one interaction and replicates, but typically you will be able to analyze very complex interactions using or combining uh, the global fitting together with the model builder. <laughs>